Hello everyone, this is Keith here, and today I'm taking a look at Steel Rain by the developers Polarity Flow. So, Steel Rain is a horizontal arcade style shooter with a surprising amount of content. Uh, just to, as a quick disclaimer, the developer did give me a key for this, and I'm very grateful because I wouldn't have known about this gem if they wouldn't have sort of contacted me and gave me a free copy. This game is fantastic, and I highly recommend it for fans of arcade uh, you know, horizontal or vertical shooters, smuffs, I think they're called, uh, if you're fans of those kinds of games, and uh, I think you'll definitely like this game. It's got a lot of replayability. But anyway, yeah, you go down to options here, and you have all your basic uh, options. You have uh, two different types of difficulty settings. You have this sort of slider, which uh, I think increases, like, enemies on screen and how uh, much damage you take and stuff like that. And then you also have uh, the modes here, and, of course, you can adjust put on like hardcore mode and adjust 10 difficulty. Now changing the modes here uh, increases the amount of damage you take and but it also increases the amount of rewards you get for defeating enemies and clearing uh, levels. So right off the bat you have uh, different difficulties that you can do in the level to sort of make it uh, the levels more replayability. You can also hide the damage you receive and you know show criticals and just uh, stuff like that. Uh, so when, you're, when you get hit it sure shows, shows how much damage you take. You have hints on, which is just sort of little tutorial messages. You have uh, different, uh, it only seems to be in Dutch and English right at the moment. Yeah, and then under display, you just, you can change to have the, uh, you know, you can change the details, and you can also choose to have either smooth graphics or pixelated graphics, whichever you prefer. Uh, and then under controls, you have uh, mouse lock on and off, uh, and auto fire on and off and you control speed. Control speed is where if you move your ship around sort of how quick it is and how sort of uh, the velocity of it I guess you could say. Like if you're moving with the uh, arrow keys how quick do you want to sort of move around. Uh, and then you have gamepad controls here. Uh, this is a uh, second player. When a second player joins in I believe they take control of a little drone that you have uh, around deployed around you. So that's a neat little co-op uh, aspect of the game. The game also has a level editor and of course the game does have uh, Steam Workshop support so you can import levels that people have created and upload your own levels. It sort of reminds the level editor sort of reminds me of Door Kicker in the sense that you know you just sort of take an enemy and you place it down and you just you can adjust you know how uh, dense you want the grid base and all that uh, and you can save the stage name it you know that's really cool that and you can also come over here and adjust uh, what background or what battle music you want to play in the level uh, and you know there's just so much options that you can do it's such a very simplistic but uh, powerful level editor and you can also change the effects you want going on like if you want noise or dust and all that very uh, very cool little uh, editor here and I think this is a really cool addition because this immediately gives you more uh, content yeah and it's definitely cool that they you know and the developer recently released an update which actually added new content to the game, an additional planet which unlocks new levels and new missions and quests and stuff like that. So they did, you know, free content update. That's actually really cool that they did that. Uh, so this is the main uh, screen here, right here. This is your hangar. This is where you can access your upgrades. Upgrades are whenever, or essentially, yeah, they're upgrades that you buy with credits you get from completing levels and uh, killing enemies. Yeah, basic stuff. Uh, each of these have their own sort of attributes. You know, pick whatever f uh, fits your play style. But usually, you know, the most expensive one is best. And of course, uh, as you uh, complete missions on planets, uh, you can colonize. If you go here, for instance, you can sort of uh, place buildings down uh, on the on a planet that you've colonized. And what this does is this actually can unlock uh, new uh, upgrades for your ship and new research and uh, yeah, new research uh, things here. And of course, research is essentially a skill tree. Uh, you know, it unlocks uh, sort of permanent upgrades to your ship. Like, see here, you have armor penetration and formation B, and just all kinds of other uh, upgrades that you can get. And like I said, these are unlocked by colonizing and uh, placing researching labs and stuff like that. So, you know, there's definitely a lot of skills in the skill tree, so, you know, you that's another good thing about uh, this game's replayability is there's just a lot of stuff to level up. And then you have skills, uh, and of course you can, uh, this is how you level up your uh, different types of uh, skills. You know, you get skills by leveling up, completing levels, and getting experience and whatnot. 
Then you have the elite skills, which is of course, you know, these. So yeah, there's definitely a lot of uh, content in this game. So anyway, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into missions here. Uh, so yeah, you have a ton of planets here, and of course you have, you know, three different levels on each planet. And when you factor in the replayability of the game, there's definitely a lot of content here. Uh, right from the get-go, you're just presented with a ton of content. Uh, you have quests here, which once you colonize, uh, your, colon or your uh, colonies will sometimes give you quests to earn additional uh, credits and whatnot. And you also have Orbital Patrol. Orbital Patrol is interesting because it you could uh, essentially, like, your colony will be under attack sometimes, and you can do Orbital Patrol to sort of clear up all the uh, enemies that would invade your uh, colony. And what's cool about the Orbital Patrols is they're RNG based. So when you uh, do it, Orbital Patrol, each one's sort of different. That's uh, pretty interesting. So I'm gonna go ahead and start at the first planet here and go to the uh, first mission. There is a tutorial planet, but you can just skip that if you want. I do recommend playing it. Uh, so yeah, this is the uh, gameplay. Yeah, it's uh, definitely a horizontal shooter. Uh, you uh, move with the arrow keys or WASD. You can also move with the mouse if you prefer that. I do find moving with the mouse to be actually uh, pretty snappy, and I kind of find it to be the most accurate in my opinion, but uh, I find it more comfortable playing with keyboards. So that's usually how I tend to play. Uh, so yeah, anyway, you hold a spacebar to shoot, or you you know, hold the left mouse button, um, and you have different formations. Like if you hit press shift, you can actually switch between different uh, firing modes, and of course, you know, these firing modes uh, have different purposes like the first one is usually the first formation formation a if you look at the top left uh, you can see what formation you're in so it switches between a b and c uh, but the first formation is usually this one right here is usually for hitting uh, as many enemies as possible whereas formation b is usually for maximum damage output and formation c is this always this sort of like bar which sucks in power ups um, or credits rather and also uh, can be a nice little melee thing if someone's behind you and you can't really shoot behind you well. Oh, so yeah, you know, this is the gameplay right here. It's essentially like any other smuff, although you do have health in this game. Uh, you know, some uh, horizontal shooters or vertical shooters are one-hit kill. This one, you do have health. Uh, but, you know, if, you, if that bothers you, if you want it to be a little bit more difficult, you could increase the difficulty. I think it's fine uh, for me. In fact, I think I'm about to die. Uh-oh. So yeah, and there's all kinds of power-ups to get. Like, I just picked up an area power-up, which, in of course, increases the uh, spread area of my uh, weapons. You have damage, increased damage output. And you also have a uh, different uh, fire mode uh, upgrades, like right there. Uh, essentially, the way the... Oh, I just died. Okay, time to restart. So essentially, the way the uh, different fire mode upgrades work is, you know, when a fire mode uh, upgrade comes out, you can... Uh, like right there, the timer runs down and actually switches to a different type of battery. And uh, depending on what battery you pick, changes your uh, fire, uh, the way you're gonna, your ship fires significantly. Like you, uh, like for a green uh, fire mode, for instance, you actually recover health uh, slightly. And for the blue one, which is what I have now, I think this is sort of the, uh, for hitting a ton of, this is uh, optimal for hitting just a ton of enemies at once. And I just grabbed the red fire mode, which allows, which uh, is, optimizes uh, damage output. This, this this in green is my favorite because with green you know you do recover life uh, as you uh, are in that fire mode so I actually like that. Let's see if I can't wait. See I'm gonna let that count down so it can get uh, green. Ooh, yeah there we go. Yeah, so there's definitely a lot going on in this game. Um, in some uh, horizontal and vertical arcade shooters I do notice that sometimes it would be hard to sort of notice enemy projectiles. I think this game does a very good way of uh, showing of sh showing the enemy projectiles because you see they sort of have this uh, glow around them which makes it very easy to distinguish you know, enemy fire from power-ups which you know you can't say that about uh, every schmuff because sometimes they all look the same. The bullets are just really tiny. And yeah, it's just a fantastic, you know, these games are, uh, they have such great replayability, you know, because they're just so satisfying, uh, simple to pick up, but yet very uh, difficult to master. And with this game in particular, there's so much uh, content that, you know, replaying it is super enjoyable uh, experience, in my opinion. You have tons of, uh, you know, different enemy uh, and different environments, so as you progress, you will find new enemy types and 
once again, that helps sort of uh, replayability. But yeah, so as you complete levels, you get uh, credits, you level up, and there's all kinds of stuff, you know. So there are some sort of RPG elements. One weird thing is you can uh, actually go down here and hide from enemy fire, which is interesting. Another thing is there is sort of a timer. If you look at the uh, top left uh, menu there, there is a sort of uh, timer which counts down, but I've never really uh, had any issues with the timer. I think it's mostly in the later game that you sort of have to hurry up and clear enemies quicker to progress and stuff. I've personally never really had an issue with the timer yet. So yeah, and then at the end of the level you get, uh, you know, all kinds of uh, power-ups or bonuses depending on your time left, kills and all that. Uh, you also have a leaderboard so you can see how well uh, other players have done and stuff and see your uh, position in the leaderboards. I forgot to mention that you can go to weapons and actually change what ship you want to use. They each have you know, their own different little uh, stats. I prefer the, the well-balanced one. Uh, let me find it. Uh, this is the one I usually go out with. And you can select your default uh, battery, which is, of course, your firing mode. Uh, as you can see, each of them have their own sort of attributes, and it's good to pick whichever one you prefer for the level. And then you can you know change your little drone buddy here. Uh, so yeah, there's definitely a lot of content in this game, and in my opinion, it's super uh, replayable, and it's just, you get so much content in this game. I definitely recommend it. Uh, it's only about $10, which in my opinion is a great deal if you're a fan of games like these, because there's just so much content in there, and the developer seems to be adding even more of it for free, uh, which is super cool. And yeah, it you know, it's available on uh, Linux, Mac, and Microsoft Windows, uh, and then apparently, according to the website, it is coming to Xbox One fairly soon. So yeah, anyway, uh, that is, this is uh, has been my look at Steel Rain by Polarity Flow. Fantastic game, highly recommend it. Keith, signing out.